For those of you who are taking thesis seminar, just wanted to provide a brief recap for week eight. So if you go into classwork in Google Classroom and you go to week eight, you'll see this week's lecture. And uh, just to summarize, I've included a few essential questions to, uh, to take a look at uh, for this week. Uh, the first being, have you considered an informed consent form? So make sure that if you haven't already, make sure that you have received a written confirmation in the form of an informed consent form for the participants. Remember that this is different than a permission letter. Typically a school will require uh, or they may require a, a permission letter, a letter basically giving them, uh, giving you permission to conduct your research, but at the school level. So they may ask you uh, to include a signed letter. Oftentimes I'll also sign the letter, but it will be directed towards um, an authority or an uh, administrator that will give permission for you to do the study. An informed consent form is going to be for your specific participants. So it could be for students, it might be for uh, teachers in, in most cases. But this is a form or a letter that they will sign along with you where you're basically forming an agreement that they understand overall what their participation is going to be. They understand that they can withdraw at any time. And that in most cases their information is going to be confidential. In some cases, it could also be anonymous. And um, basically, information that you leave to them if they ever have questions or need to contact you specifically about the study, that, that they have that information as well. Uh, the second essential question, what instruments and procedures have you followed to select the best participants for your study? So the first few weeks of this month, if we look at the calendar here, we basically were talking in terms of how do you go about selecting the best participants for your study. We want to try to, in some cases, have interviews, maybe uh, apply some questionnaires, maybe even focus groups in some cases, but with the intention of choosing the best candidates, the best participants for your study that will assure you as best as possible that they will ultimately give you or provide you information that best answers your research questions. If we don't take these steps, you're more likely to be in a situation where you start the data collection process and you, you find out that the situation, uh, the teacher, the context uh, is not providing you information for your research questions. There are no guarantees, but if you go through this process that we've been talking about over the last few weeks, you're more likely to f find good candidates for your study. Good candidates um, are going to be able to answer your research questions or at least address your research questions. And also keep in mind the different ways in which you can find or um, but different ways that you can go about your purposeful uh, sampling selection. Number three, what purpose, purpose sampling criteria best applies to your own research? So this is uh, something very important. You need to be able to answer why did you choose these particular groups or teachers or schools that this is going to be something that you are going to include in your method section as well as in your uh, presentation when you give your oral defense. The next question, how have you planned uh, subsequent instruments and protocols for collecting the rest of your data? We're at a point now in the data collection process where we have about three more weeks of collecting data and all of you now should be at a point where you're planning specifically now you've already chosen your participants, I should say that first, and then you should now in this week be able to start planning the observations and the interviews overall. Okay, so again, things can change throughout the process, but for example, you might agree with your participants or with your teachers that you plan to observe, let's say, two to three classes per week, and let's say at the end of each week you plan an interview. This is just an example, but you need to form an agreement uh, with your participants in the ways in which you plan to collect the data over the next two or three weeks. 
It's important to mention at this point as well that once you reach these agreements that you keep your um, you keep your your schedule up to date. So remember each week you're going to be asked to reflect on your progress, include what you've completed, include things of what you plan to do going forward, and that you maintain your schedule as part of the reflective process uh, over the remaining three to four weeks that we have before we uh, break, before we go on break. All right, so the next question, how do you plan to triangulate your data sources? Make sure that you are collecting different types or different data sources, different types of evidence. Documents, homework, maybe lesson plans, anything in writing from the school in the form of a mission statement, a vision statement, any policies that they have. These are all data analysis or you, these are all content analysis. Uh, or examples of uh, content analysis that you can uh, use uh, for your study. Observations, of course, interviews, focus groups. These are all other forms of data source that you can use to bring together to triangulate the information. We don't want to rely on any one source or even two sources. Ideally, at least three different types of evidence will be used to answer your research questions. How do you plan to keep current your data collection table. I mentioned this earlier. So just make sure that you're collecting uh, the data and updating your schedule and updating the particular shared uh, schedule that we have, the spreadsheet, so that I'm also informed and can uh, provide you feedback if needed. Uh, the process that we're going to follow basically at this point we need to have decided on a purposeful sample technique, so hopefully you've already selected that. Hopefully you, at this point now, have your participants. You should, at this point in the process, have the participants for your study. The, you need to begin planning the next three weeks, as I mentioned, in terms of your data collection, your instruments, and your procedures. Your procedures or protocols are the ways in which you're going to collect the data. The instruments are those that are going to facilitate the way in which you collect uh, the data. Remember that everything now at this point needs to be very structured. So if you have an interview, it should be recorded. If you have a focus group, it should be recorded, regardless of uh, who you're speaking with. Make sure that you have an observation sheet, that you're using an instrument. Uh, if you do a, an interview, that you have an interview guide, that it's a formal document that you're going to use to facilitate the questioning uh, and the, the, the questioning of your participants. All of these instruments are going to be included as an annex in your document and you're going to be referencing those in the method section. Remember the method section is only 500 words and I would suggest that you not complete the method section until at the end of this process because of course you're going to need a lot of uh, this information um, to complete these 500 words you're not going to have this information until the very end or towards the end of this, uh, of this uh, five to six week data collection process. Finally, make sure that you reflect in this week's progress by updating your data collection table. So basically this is what we're going to focus on this week. I've included or I've left from prior weeks the review of the context of your study. Make sure you're able to answer these questions as you progress Things may change, but it's very important that you're able to answer these questions. If you're not, if you have any questions about it, how to answer some of these questions, this is something that we can certainly talk about in our tutoring session. So this is our focus for this week. Again, we are now at a point where we need to be scheduling and collecting our, our data formally now for our chosen participants. If you are not sure how to proceed through throughout the week, it's very important that you get with me. Either you reach out to me via email or you come by my office and we have, a, have a, an additional one-on-one -on -one tutoring session to make sure that you're very clear on what comes next in the process. Do not spend days uh, not sure what, what comes next. Okay, So if you're not sure, uh, just let me know.